Okay, in this video we'll talk about how to calculate pension expense and the associated journal entries. Uh, to do this, we're going to use a pension worksheet. So, using a whole worksheet just to get a journal entry may seem like too much work. However, I would challenge you to try and figure it out without a worksheet. If you're able to do that, go ahead, but I, I personally, I can't do it. So here's the worksheet. Here's the idea. We're going to list each component of pension expense uh, right here under the items. We're going to list all the components, you know, one, two, three, etc. Uh, we're going to then see how they're going to affect our journal. So whether it increases the pension expense, I would put a, uh, a debit here. If it decreases pension expense, I would put a, a credit. Does it affect cash? Does it affect uh, prior year service costs, gain or loss, uh, pension asset or liability? And there's two extra uh, columns over here. This is something the corporation is going to keep for their own records, but these won't affect your, your journal entries. So they would keep a record of what are their plan assets, you know, what's the value, and then what is the projected benefit obligation. In reality, for financial reporting, you're just going to report the, the net of those two, which is the pension asset slash liability. Okay. Let's see how this works. So here's a good example. You may want to write it down, uh, but here we have Ross Company, and they have the following information for their pension plan for the year 2014. So look, January 1st, we have plan assets of 100K. The projected benefit obligation is also 100K. So apparently you don't have a pension asset or liability. You're, you're funding right on target, right? Annual service cost of 9K, settlement rate of 10%, the actual return on your plan assets is $10,000, the funding contributions are $8,000, and the benefits that are paid to current retirees during this year are $7,000. So let's figure out the pension expense and all the other journal entries for the year. Uh, so this is how it looks, guys. Our service costs... Well, first of all, this is how it looks on the first row. I should, I should do the first row first here, really. <clears throat> Projected benefit obligation is $100,000. That's a liability, so, uh, so it's in parentheses, it's credit. And you debit plan assets for $100,000, because that's what plan assets are. So your net liability or asset is zero. Just 100K minus 100K, zero. Then the problem says you have service costs of 9000 so service costs are going to increase your pension expense and they're also going to increase that liability in the future so you see i credit my projected benefit obligation i credit that for nine i debit service costs for nine i'm sorry I debit pension expense for nine the second component of pension expense is interest costs remember our settlement rate is 10 percent so i'm going to take this projected benefit obligation of 100,000 that I started with, I'm going to multiply it by 10%. And that will give me a pension expense of 10,000 debit. I'm going to credit my projected benefit obligation for 10,000. It's going up by 10,000. The return on plan assets they mentioned was uh, 10% or 10,000. Because you, you have $100,000 of plan assets uh, times 10%. So you returned uh, $10,000. Well, that's going to increase your plan assets by $10,000. It's also going to decrease your pension expense by $10,000. Okay. And then we'll see later that this is not the complete answer. We'll see that actually you have to take into account the expected return on those plan assets. But... It's complicated enough as it is right now. Let's just say the actual return is equal to the expected one. Okay, let's just let's simplify it for a moment. The next item is contributions. Your employees contributed $8,000 to the plan. So when they did that, 
uh, or no, no, not your employees. You as an employer contributed 8,000. I'm sorry. You contributed 8,000. So your cash goes down by 8,000 and your plan assets go up by 8,000. Okay, so credit and debit. And it mentions that you paid current retirees $7,000 out of the, uh, the plan assets this year. So plan assets goes down by 7,000 as you make that payment. At the same time, your, your liability goes down by 7,000. So I will debit the liability here, right? Because you don't owe that anymore. You just paid it. <clears throat> After you do all that, you should make a big line right here. One big line and stop and kind of sum it all up. Okay, this is what I like to do. So pension expense, uh, nine plus 10 minus 10 equals nine. And this row is the journal entry, all right? So your pension expense is gonna be $9,000 for the year. That journal entry will also include a credit to cash for 8,000, as you can see, 8,000 credit plus nothing, just 8,000. These items we didn't get into, we will get into that later, but for this period, they're not, there's nothing there. <clears throat> Now, how do you get this 1,000 here for your journal entry? You kind of have to work backwards. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the, the right-hand side of this whole worksheet. You're gonna see where your plan assets are now. So they were 100 plus 10 plus eight minus seven. 111 is where you're at. How much do you owe? What is your PBO at the moment? Okay, 100 plus nine plus 10. That's 119 minus seven. 112 credit okay so what is your current balance then for your net pension asset or liability well let's see i owe 112 uh, i have plan assets of 111 so negative 1000 dollars a credit of 1000 is where we stand a liability okay so it goes like this you're gonna you need these two first i'm gonna draw an arrow here then you're able to solve for this one here then, after that, you can finally solve for this one right here. Got to work backwards a little bit, okay? That's the order it goes in. Because now, how do I get this 1,000? Well, I started off with zero. I had no pension asset or liability, right? My assets were equal to my obligation. At the end of the period, I have a $1,000 liability. So the change in the period is 1,000 credit. That is the change for the period, and that will be the journal entry then. Does that make sense? Well, you can see it makes sense. Look at this row for journal entry. A debit of 9,000, a credit for 8,000, and then therefore another credit for 1,000. So it works. Here is the journal entry. And that's how it's done. 